so uh, I decided to do another mo uh, another video. Uh, I hope people can actually hear me. It's a little loud in this room that I'm in. Uh, but I want to do a video that uh, people have been asking about, and that is a video on moving uh, Dodges, Chryslers, Rams, whatever, uh, to run ethanol. Now, this will not be a video for flex fuel, but a video for switching over to flex completely. Now, this specific vehicle that I'm going to show you on, we are actually going to move to ethanol here uh, shortly after it's dialed in all the way. Now, uh, this is a 2015 Ram Rebel with a 392 in it with Hellcat injectors and we are finishing up the injector pulse width data uh, in order to get that correct and once it's correct and everything is running properly then we will switch this specific vehicle over to ethanol. Now one of the first things you need to do is go to the fuel, go to the general. Now this is going to be different on different model dodges. Uh, if this video doesn't match your dodge and you'd like me to take a look at it uh, give me the year and date or whatever or send me the file and I'll try to make a video for it. Um, one of the things that you have to change is the FA stoic. Now the Dodge doesn't use air fuel ratio it uses fuel air ratio which you would think is the same thing but it is not. Uh, they're basically the inverse. So the stoic air fuel ratio for gasoline is 14.7. The air fuel ratio for E85 is 9.85. Well, 1 divided by 14.7 equals 0 0.068 gasoline, which is this. 1 divided by 9.85 is 0 0.1015 for ethanol. So, first of all, you change this to 0 0.1015. Now, the stoic reading is going to be for ethanol. So remember that when you make this change, you should have a full tank of ethanol. Don't make this change and then drive somewhere on regular gasoline. Okay, and, and on this specific vehicle, you need to change uh, all three of these tables here. Now, and I don't know if most people know this, but I don't plan any of these videos prior to doing them. I just do them. So sometimes I jump around and, and we go over a few different things in order to get things set up properly. So make sure that before you even try to move to E85 that anything to do with your injectors, speed density, everything is tuned perfect for your vehicle for 91 or 93 before moving over to a different fuel. Now your cold warm up. You do not use the alcohol tables because this is not a flex fuel setup. Okay, You are going to use the gas setup. Now. E85 does not like the cold at all. Okay, so you're gonna have to play with this table on your own to uh, get it where the car likes it. Now, unfortunately, you might have to wait till it's cold out. Okay, but a good starting point would be to do 10 or 20 percent. So, on this specific vehicle, based on how cold it is, where the person lives, I'm gonna do 20 percent right away. If you live in an area where it doesn't get that cold, or it gets cold slowly, uh, make small changes to this, 5, 10, 15%. Uh, and for those of you that don't know, timesing it by 1.2 is adding 20%. So to add 5% would be to times it by 1.05. Okay, so... Now, these settings right here I use on every vehicle. Just pay attention to them, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 127, 000. Now we might change this based on the setup, but this is what we use, okay? Now this is the what power enrichment works for me on this specific vehicle. Now, it might be too much fuel might be not enough. Again, on ethanol, you're kind of just guessing at first. So I wouldn't say go in and copy my table. Uh, I would say leave it stock or where you have it and modify it from there. Um, and even this has got a little bit of peaks in it. So, you know, I, I should smooth it out a little bit better, uh, which I will do down the road. Just 
trying to see if there's really anything else we need to screw around with. Not exactly sure why the MDS is enabled. I think that might have been a customer choice on that one. Now there's obviously a little bit more things involved, like all kinds of filters and things like that. Um, these type of things are what you would go into when you really just, when you get everything as perfect as you can and just something little is wrong. We'll try to get into these tables a little bit later as we fully understand what they do. Uh, we don't want to change, you don't, you don't want to change the table if you don't understand it. So in, in HP tuners, there's going to be tons of tables that you're not going to have anything, have any idea what they do. And you might ask and no one knows what it does. It's best to stay away from those tables or to be a pioneer and only change that table and see what it does through logging. Now, again, for timing, these flex fuel tables don't work. Now, ethanol, you can run probably an extra three to six degrees of timing. Unfortunately, just because it can take more timing doesn't mean it actually benefits from more timing. Uh, for me, I would add maybe two degrees of timing across the whole chart. Um, without a dyno, there's not really a way to find out how much it actually likes. Um, I do know that on Hemis, from what I've seen, uh, is that the timing that it makes the best power at on most of these vehicles, uh, when you switch to ethanol, it just holds it easier and makes more power at the exact same timing. So now where on like a Hellcat, you might run like 12, 14 degrees timing at wide open throttle. Uh, the ethanol is going to let you run closer to 17 to 19 degrees of wide open throttle, and it, it makes a huge power difference. Now, in NA vehicles, uh, you're going to make a little bit less power uh, per degree of timing on ethanol, but it, it's still going to help. It's, it's going to help a, a decent amount. I mean, a lot of vehicles can pick up from a properly tuned ethanol tune on NA can pick up to as much as 30 horsepower. Uh, unfortunately, Hemi's are not high displacement engines. I shouldn't say high displacement. They're not high compression engines. They do not benefit as much, but Hemi's are prone to knock. Uh, so this will help them run better at the exact same timing uh, than they already do. So uh, hopefully that makes sense and I can explain it if needed. Now, um, what you're gonna wanna do here is you're gonna wanna make changes based on certain things. So this is the wide open throttle table, nothing special. Um, you know, wide open throttle, it's gonna make 17 to 20 degrees of timing based on the climate that this person lives in. It's gonna, they're gonna hit the gas, it's gonna come kind of through this area here, and it's gonna kind of get right around this area and come over. Um, now, some of the changes that you might make is you can make changes based on barometric pressure. Um, so I believe this barrel table is actually stock and it is actually the opposite of what I would do. So higher altitudes you can run more timing than lower altitudes uh, because there's less air and it actually takes a little bit more timing for it to, uh, you know, whatever. So a lot of times for a vehicle like this, I might actually put two degrees of timing here negative two degrees of time here and we might just do something like this nah that was kind of dumb I don't like that so let's say this is the normal range you drive in or make that zero okay we're gonna do this here now let's say this is the normal range you drive in okay but let's say you drive to the next state over and the elevation changes slightly. This is going to give you a little bit extra timing for the elevation change. Or let's say you drive from, let's say this is 4,000 feet above sea level, and you drive closer to Houston or something, and it's going to pull a little bit of timing for the extra air. Uh, the concept might not make sense. It will end up being the opposite of what you would think. Uh, but this is what we've seen to work properly. Now, you can play with these tables more on ethanol 
adding and pulling timing based on elevation and to coolant temp, things like that, uh, to really get the full benefit from the uh, ethanol. Now, after you make these changes, and there isn't, I mean, you're going to have to go through and make other changes as you go, but they're the same changes that you would make on a vehicle that is not on ethanol. So let's say you're going to put, we're going to save this. So we're going to just add two degrees of timing to all these tables that we personally use. Okay, now the next point is you're going to end up having to move over to uh, your scanner. Now this scanner that's on my screen right now is for my diesel. Uh, not exactly sure why it says 2000 Chevy Camaro at the top. Oh, because this is a 2000 Chevy Camaro that's on my screen, but this setup here is set up for my diesel. Now from there you're going to end up having to go to your scanner and you're going to have to redo things that you've already done. Now the things that you've already done that you're going to have to redo is you're going to have to do uh, a different fuel mass. So let's move the layout back and let's see if we can get this. So you need to log your fuel mass variation, you need to log your uh, volumetric efficiency. Now go out, drive it, okay? Now let's say you drive it, okay? And you look at your bank one and bank two tables. Now for those of you that are confused by what's going on right now in the video, we have VE tuning for Dodge and fuel injector tuning for Dodge. Watch both videos and they will explain what we're talking about here. Now, go out, drive it a little bit, pull over, look at your log. If you come here and your B1 and B2 is all one thing, let's say it's all green and it all says negative 20s, okay? That means your VE table needs to be left alone, okay? It means you're gonna go to your fuel mass tables and you're gonna look at it, and when you look at it, these are gonna be populated by a bunch of similar numbers. That means work on the fuel injector or fuel mass tuning first and get that close. Once that is close, then come over here and do your volumetric efficiency tuning because once these are close, these are gonna have some red over here, some green over here, some red over here, uh, and that's when you do your VE tuning. Now, for those of you that are wondering, the VE tuning only needs to be done when you have the neural network turned off. Uh, we will eventually make videos for the neural network trainer or whatever the HP tuners calls it, uh, but at this point, we don't see a need for it. Um, on any of the vehicles that we own or work on because we don't it's not something that's now if I still had my Hellcat I would do it um, just so we can make some videos and so I could even get my Hellcat even closer to perfect um, but I mean it made 800 horse with less than $1,500 in mods at the wheels so I mean it, it, it was it was a pretty decent car uh, very impressed by how little it takes to make them a fast car um, so with that being said, those are the basics that you're going to need. And you're going to see your air fuel ratio commanded is going to change here. Uh, and it's going to say that 9, 8, whatever. Uh, these are the basics that you need to start doing a ethanol tune on Dodges. Now, your minimum spark might change a little bit. And these are things that you're going to have to kind of troubleshoot to figure out. Uh, you know, if... If it's not running rich and it's not running lean, but it doesn't really want to idle that well, uh, wants to die, things like that, you're probably going to need to come here into this area and add more timing to keep it running. Uh, it's just the nature of the game. That's just how things work. Uh, otherwise, sometimes you'll have an idle airflow table, which I don't believe this vehicle has. It does not have an idle airflow table, so you can't mess with that at all. Uh, it does have a torque reserve. Um, torque reserve is a little bit different on Dodges than it is in Chevys, uh, but you can modify the torque reserve to get it to stay running uh, because it actually will allow the vehicle to make more torque and idle. Um, so that's that's this video here. If you have any questions or you think we have any more ideas for videos we should make, just let me know and we will take care of it.